Hi guys, I'm Phil Sturpey. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with S3 using the AWS Toolkit in Visual Studio. In an earlier video, I showed you how to download and install the AWS Toolkit into Visual Studio. But here I just want to focus on how we can use it from a management point of view to access services, in this case S3, whilst working away in Visual Studio. In the earlier video, I showed you how to configure Visual Studio to use an IAM user called Frank to connect to Amazon Web Services and that involved putting in Frank's access key and secret key. Well, now we know that Visual Studio is configured, let's focus on S3. In this video, I don't want to look at how we might write code using the SDK. This is purely management tasks, like for example, creating buckets, dragging files into buckets and so on. So I'm just going to try and create a new bucket. I'm going to call it demo bucket. But a thing to be aware of with S3 is buckets need to be globally unique. I've got a strong feeling that demo bucket will have gone by now. So let me try that. Nope, that name's not available. So we could try adding in a hyphen, but I'm almost certain that that's gone as well. Yes, it is. So let's try and put in the prefix of QA, QA demo bucket. Now here we're getting a different message. What's interesting is that bucket has actually gone. But when recording another version of this demo to use Eclipse, I did create a signed URL, which is going to last for a further 60 minutes. So I'm going to come up with another bucket name. Let's go for my demo bucket. Someone else has got my demo bucket. This is getting a bit tedious. Okay, let's go for AWS Toolkit Demo Bucket. Well, that's a relief. There we have the bucket. So that's a task you might perform in Visual Studio as a developer. It's not worth writing code to create a bucket. You just simply want to create one. Go ahead and create one. Good luck with the naming. Another task that you might want to carry out whilst in Visual Studio is simply drop a couple of files into a bucket to work with. Once again, it's not worth writing the code to do that. You just simply want to get the files in there. So let's say I want to drag a file into my bucket. If I open up the file explorer, what I can't do is take the file and drag it and drop it on the node because all it's actually going to do is open it inside Visual Studio. What I need to do is open the bucket or browse the bucket. Let me hit browse. We open up the window. I've got various buttons to allow me to upload files and folders. I just want to bring one file in for now. So there's a file I want to upload. Let me drag it in. Now we've got a couple of questions. So this is a toolkit within Visual Studio helping us. We're taking a file and what we're doing is uploading it to S3. There are a couple of flavors of S3. There's S3 standard, but there's also reduced redundancy storage. If I want to use reduced redundancy storage, or perhaps I want the file encrypted at rest, then I can check these boxes. I can also specify whether I want to have the file publicly readable or not. Well, I don't. Let me just check the permissions tab. So at the moment we have no permissions. Now I am able to generate permissions. If I hit add, drop down a list, I can specify authenticated users, everyone. Let me get rid of that. This will be creating an access control list. I start to create some IAM policies. I don't want to manage permissions from here. I'd rather do that elsewhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And there we go, the file's been uploaded. I was given the option to supply an alternate key, but the file name for now will do nicely. So that's how simple it is to upload a file into S3 whilst working in Visual Studio. And if I could upload a file, I can just as easily download the file. I could also delete. Now, although I didn't want to manage permissions whilst in Visual Studio, I do want to look at how people might access it. If I right click the file and copy the URL to a clipboard, if I open up an incognito window, and I'm doing this because I have in another window logged in as my root account, let me just paste in that URL. So this is the URL to access that file straight out of the bucket. And as you can see, we've got access denied. This is an incognito window by default 
all files in S3 are secure, can't be accessed. However, what you can do is whilst in Visual Studio in the toolkit, you could right click a file and generate a pre-signed URL. Let me select that. And what you can do is have a time stamped pre-signed URL. So it's currently 11.15. I'll go for 12.15. So the default is supply URL that has 60 minutes worth of access. I'll generate. And incidentally, this is for get rather than put. I'll just copy that URL. And then once again, go back to the incognito window and use that URL instead. As you can see, it does contain an access key that's just been generated and an expiry time. Press enter. And there you go. From this unauthenticated window, the URL which has been signed was enough to get the content out of S3. So back into Visual Studio. We've been able to carry out a couple of simple management tasks, such as create a bucket, upload a file into a bucket. And although I had the option to manage permissions, I didn't go down that route. What I did do instead was create a temporary signed URL. Last thing I'll do is just come along and delete the bucket. Specify the objects that's a go. So I'm all tidy. I've tidied up after myself. The more things we could do with S3, and of course, we would be able, now we have the toolkit installed, to write some code thanks to the SDK that came with it. But I just wanted to give you a feel for some of the simple things that you could do with S3 whilst in the AWS toolkit in Visual Studio. There you have it. In this video, I've shown you how easy it is to work with S3 using the AWS toolkit in Visual Studio. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to comment on my blog and Facebook page. Perhaps you could suggest more video topics. Most of all, don't forget to subscribe to keep up with my videos as I release them. Bye for now.